My name is Christine Hillock and I'm the Housing Initiatives Project Manager with the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar on Loudoun County's Home Ownership Programs. This is the first of four webinars that we'll be doing this month in celebration of Home Ownership Month, and we're so glad that you've decided to join us today. Um, a few notes just about today's webinar setup. Your cameras and mics um, are disabled, uh, as well as the chat is disabled for this uh, session. Uh, as I said, the link for closed captioning was shared uh, in the chat just a few minutes ago. Um, we are recording the meeting and we do plan to post the meeting uh, after we conclude today. Today's uh, presenters are my colleagues here at the Department of Housing and Community Development. We have Abby Welty. If Abby, Abby, if you could turn on your camera just to say hello. Um, Abby oversees the Affordable Dwelling Unit Purchase Program. And we also have Sharon Holman. And if Sharon, you could turn on your camera just to say hi. Uh, Sharon oversees our home ownership loan programs. We are also joined today by Ms. Melinda Nebel, uh, who is the County's Fair Housing Coordinator. And if Melinda, if you could say hi. <laughs> um, this is a new position that we're very excited about. Um, so Melinda just joined, joined the team in March. It's a, it's a new county position, uh, the first time we've had a Fair Housing Coordinator, and we're really excited to have this new resource for the community. And Melinda will be helping with webinar management today. Um, we have received several questions in advance, and we will try to address as many of them as possible today during the presentation. If you have additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, individually. Uh, we hope that today is an opportunity for you to kind of get to know some of us and, and, and see our name and our faces and um, feel comfortable reaching out to us with any direct questions you might have after today. Um, we will provide contact information for each of us at the end of the presentation, but you can also always send an email to our general housing mailbox, which is simply housing at loudon.gov, or you can call our front desk at 703-737-8323. And with that, we would like to get started. Melinda, if you could go to the next slide. So just a little bit of information about the Department of Housing and Community Development. We are a new department which was created at the end of March of 2022. Um, many of our programs previously were part of the Department of Family Services and um, we have uh, information on this slide about just an overview of the services that we provide. We have homeownership programs which we'll go through in detail today. We also have rental programs including our affordable dwelling unit rental program. Um, we will not go into detail today about our rental programs but there's lots of information on our website about those programs. We have three home improvement programs, and we actually are having a webinar next week um, to provide an overview of those programs. So if you are interested, feel free to register and join us for that session as well. Um, we do offer education to the public, including webinars like today. Um, we have uh, entitlement grant programs, so we are recipient recipients of federal funds, including the Community Development Block Grant and Home Investment Partnerships, uh, and we oversee those funds for Loudoun County. And then we also have um, loans for developers of affordable housing so that we can work to increase the supply of affordable housing in the county. All of our work is guided by an unmet housing needs strategic plan, which was approved by the Board of Supervisors in September of 2021. Um, and if you are interested in reading the plan or um, finding out more information about what uh, sort of are some of our strategic goals are, you can visit the web link that's provided there, which is loudon.gov forward slash housing needs. You can go to the next slide. So just a few highlights about our home ownership programs before we dive into some of the details. Um, Abby is going to provide a little bit more information about what we mean by a uh, first time home buyer. Um, but to give you some more detail about what we mean when we say, say low and moderate income, uh, the unmet housing needs strategic plan defines that as um, uh, a continuum of housing needs for households up to 100% of the area median income. All of the programs that we will discuss today have income guidelines, and we will get into some specifics about what those are for each of the programs. The programs that we'll be talking about today are there uh, listed on the slide there, um, our affordable dwelling unit purchase program, our affordable market purchase, purchase program, the down payment and closing cost assistance program, our public employee grants for home ownership program, and our low interest, mortgage, low interest mortgage rate program, also known as SPARC. You can go to the next slide. 
So this income chart shows area median income for the Metropolitan Washington Statistical Area, including Loudoun County. Uh, this new chart was effective May 15th of 2023, and this information is also included online on our website at loudoun.gov AMI. And you can go to the next slide. And this chart provides uh, the income guidelines for each of the programs that we're going to discuss today. So you'll see there that the Affordable Dwelling Unit Purchase Program is available to households who are earning between 30 to 70% of the area median income adjusted for household size. The Affordable Market, market, market Purchase Program is available to families who earn between 70 to 100% of the area median income, um, uh, also adjusted for family size. Our down payment and closing cost programs have specific income ranges, which are listed there on the chart. Um, this year, currently for both of those programs for DPCC and PEG, the range is 45,650 to 106,500. And that is based on a family of four, but it is not adjusted for, house, for household size. And Sharon will explain a little bit more about that when we get into her programs. And then we're also going to leave it to Sharon to explain the income guidelines for our SPARC program, because it, as you can see there, they're a little bit um, complicated. Um, you can go to the next chart or the next slide, please. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Abby Welty, who will provide the overview about the ADU Purchase Program. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Abby Welty. I am one of the housing specialists here with the ADU Program. Um, so I'm here today to kind of give you guys a catch up on the details, some of the details of the program. Uh, so the ADU program assists with first-time home buyers to purchase ADU homes um, scattered throughout the Loudoun County area. Um, first-time home buyers are people who have not owned a home in the, within the last three years. For the ADU program, if you did own a home within the last three years and you're either you were married to someone and you're no longer married to them due to divorce or death, uh, we do have what we call a displaced homemaker exception that we give to you as long as you can provide proof that you would qualify. Um, so first time home buyer um, also applies when you're taking your Virginia housing course. Um, and in general, it's always a three year marker that um, first time home buyer means you just haven't owned in three years. Um, so this is just a little bit of detail about um, some of the medium prices here in Loudoun County. So as of April 2023, um, according to DAR, um, the median price homes sold within Loudoun County was $698,250. Um, of course, the ADU program, it will be a lower price. Generally speaking, most of the homes range between $175 and one, I'm sorry, $175 and $225. Um, the homes are purchased directly from the builder or um, through someone who currently owns an ADU home and they're trying to sell it. That's what we call a resale. Um, that is a common misconception, though I do want to note that when you buy an ADU home, the county owns it. Um, so again, you're buying it from the builder or someone who currently owns a home and they're trying to sell it, but the county does not own the ADU. We just have um, covenants that are attached to these units. Um, so existing homes, the note right there about existing homes is what I was talking about earlier. It just means that someone has an ADU, they need to sell it or they want to sell it for whatever reason. Um, and if it does not hit the 15 year control period, which I'll kind of touch on at the end of today or a little bit later on in the presentation, um, it just means that they have not hit that 15 year control period. So they have to sell the home back to the ADU program to another certificate holder based on the county determined sales price. And we can go to the next slide. Okay, so I had mentioned this a little bit earlier, but all of the ADUs are scattered throughout Loudoun County. They're not in one central area. Um, so for the most part, you're gonna see ADU homes in areas where there's a lot of development. So right now it's Chantilly, South Riding area, there's a lot of development. If you see homes that are in a maybe Leesburg or West, anything like that, sometimes Sterling, um, they're normally resale homes. So like I said, that goes back to homes that are being sold within the program. Um, units are typically townhomes and condos, but we do have single family homes that come through the program. Um, those are not common. And of course they are kind of highly sought after. So people who have been in the program a long time generally wait on the wait list until they can buy a bigger single family home. Um, 
But for the most part, when you're in the program, if you get approved, you're going to be seeing townhomes and condos. Um, the gross household income when you'll qualify or when you apply to the program must fall within 30 and 70 percent of the AMI area median household um, based on your own household size. So um, depending, so just to kind of give you an example, depending on your household size, you have to fall within that 30 and 70 percent range. Um, so for an example, if you're a four person household, your minimum of 30% would be 45,650. That's what you have to, that's what you would have to make, but you couldn't exceed the maximum for four people of $106,500. Okay, so that gives you an example. When you go to the website and apply, these numbers will all be up there for you, but that's an example so you know what we're looking at. Um, we do have actually right there the link for the AMI. Um, so if you wanted to take a look at the numbers, they were just updated recently. Um, we are not a HUD program. I always tell people that, but we do get our numbers from HUD. So that's why we have the area median income that comes every year, normally between February and May of every year. Um, so you'll see on the website they're updated as soon as we have those new numbers in. Uh, for this program, you do have to be pre-approved through a lender. We do not do any financing for the ADU program. We strictly sell the homes and um, make sure that guidelines are followed to qualify um, for the program, uh, but your lender would finance you. So not all lenders work with the ADU program because of the restrictions. So when you're looking to get pre-qualified and apply to the program, then you want to make sure that you if you're not using a list uh, lender on our lenders list, which we do have online, you want to make sure that the lender you are using does finance ADUs because you don't want to get to a contract or settlement point and you realize the lender is not going to finance your loan because it's an ADU you're purchasing. Um, so the ADU program does not have a credit score requirement. This is something that you would be required to um, to have when you're getting pre-approved for the loan, but not for the ADU program. So in the qualification checklist, you, that will not be something you have to submit to our office. Also, we do have an ID documentation list. Um, that link is right there for you. Uh, but when you're applying to the program, there are um, IDs that you have to submit to us. If you're applying and you're the main applicant and you're on the loan, you do have to provide two forms of legal presence. Like I said, that list is online. Um, if you have a co-applicant and the co-applicant is on the loan, they also will have to provide two forms of legal ID. If they're not on the loan, it's just form, one form. And then all other household members, regardless of their age, have to provide, or you would have to provide a copy of their um, legal presence, again, from that documentation that we have online. Okay, next slide. Okay, so I'm getting, I'm skipping ahead just a little bit because again, there's an application process for the ADU program, uh, but once you are approved and placed on the wait list, um, it is a really long wait list. Just to kind of give you guys a heads up, right now we have close to 500 people sitting on the wait list. Everybody is prioritized based on where they live and work. Um, so for the ADU purchase program, this is again, strictly for purchase, um, but if you live and work in Loudoun County, that is priority number one. It's the highest priority, just meaning that we market to priority one first um, because those applicants live and work in Loudoun County. We have priority two where people, um, we have people placed in that, um, and those are people who work in Loudoun County, but they're not living in Loudoun County. Priority three is for people who live in Loudoun, but they do not work in Loudoun. Um, and then priority four is for people who don't live or work in Loudoun County. Um, so one thing I always tell people, um, when we determine the work location, we're looking at the primary job of either that applicant or co-applicant. So to give you an example, if you're applying by yourself uh, and you have a part-time job and a full-time job, we are going to look at the full-time job as your primary job and the work location of that primary job is where we will place you as far as your priority goes. If you're applying with a spouse and let's say you're the main applicant, you have a full-time job in Fairfax County, but your spouse has a primary job in Loudoun County, as long as one of you have a primary job in Loudoun, your spouse, we can place you as working in Loudoun. Um, so we do give that flexibility to people who are applying. 
um, with spouses because there's the applicant and the co-applicant in that situation. OK, uh, so let's go ahead and move to the next slide. OK, one thing I do want to mention before I continue is I had said earlier the waitlist is about 500 people. We don't tell people a, um, a waitlist or a wait time for all applicants on the waitlist. Um, the only time frame we have that we give out is for people who live and work in Loudoun County, meaning they are priority one. Um, it's about a four to five year wait for purchasing a home through the program. And that's just because there's so many people that are on the wait list and there's the, the supply and demand do not last, or I'm sorry, do not um, match. So it just takes a long time for you to purchase through the program. So we just want people to be aware that if you're going to apply to the program, um, it, it'll take a long time to purchase a unit through the program um, just because of the size, okay? Um, so I do not handle the pre-screening for ADUs. My position handles uh, people who are who have gotten past the pre-screening portion and now they're being placed on the wait list. Once you're on the wait list, I handle that that portion of the process. Um, so basically managing the wait list. But if you're interested in applying to the program, uh, we have the website here at the bottom of the, the slide. Um, so that's a really good resource to go to if you're interested in the program. There is a lot of documentation that is required to submit for you to actually apply to the program. Um, what I always tell people is the first thing you want to do is gather everything on the ADU checklist. So we have a checklist on our website um, that has every item that you need to submit to the program for us to look through your file. The second thing you want to do is, and you could actually do this before, it doesn't really matter, um, but you want to complete the self-screening -screen questionnaire. We have all of this on the website, and the self-screening questionnaire is basically just a sheet of paper that you can answer questions on that would tell you if you meet the minimum qualifications for the program. You've not applied at this point, you're just wondering if you meet the minimum, okay? Um, so once you've gotten that checklist and the questionnaire completed, whatever order you want to do it really is fine. Um, then you, if you think you meet the minimum qualifications, you want to submit your application online. Um, of course, at that point, you've gathered all your paperwork from the checklist. If you think you qualify, you submit your application online. You're going to complete that application, print it off, sign it, and compile all the paperwork together to submit to our office. Um, we have to have hard copies of the paperwork. We don't accept applications by email. So if you're applying to the program, you've got everything on your checklist, the pre-screening and the application signed and ready to go. You can drop that off at our office, which we actually have the address online, um, or you can mail it to our office. We have we have a different mailing address and um, and physical location address. So you want to make sure you take note of that when you're applying to the program and submitting your paperwork. We also tell people that once you've gathered all the information, you've got your hard copy application signed and everything ready to go, you may you need to make sure you submit that paperwork uh, 10 days with 10 business days within submitting the application to the program. The reason for that is we're trying to get through a lot of applications every month. We go through hundreds of applications our pre-screening portion does. And it's really important that as soon as you get to application submitted, that you get the paperwork submitted to us as soon as possible because they're all time sensitive. Specifically speaking, your pre-approval letter is only good for a period of 90 days. So again, with the wait list size, you will not be purchasing, of course, within 90 days, but we need to be looking at your pa paperwork within a timely manner. So that's why we ask you to submit it within 10 days of, of completing the application online, okay? We can go to the next slide. Okay, so now that I've explained how you complete that application, um, I'm just going to touch real briefly on the timeline for applications. Um, given the the number of people applying to the program, we are a, a really small staff program with a lot of people that are trying to get in. So it does take time to get through the program as far as your application goes. Um, I don't have a time a hard set timeline for that just because it varies depending on the um, workload at the time that you apply. Um, so as soon as you submit your application to the program, whether you drop it off or mail it, 
um, you will be able to contact our pre-screener and you can just contact her by phone and let her know you submitted an application and you would like an update. One thing I do want to let you know though is she normally reviews applications as soon as they come in pretty quickly. Um, so you should hear from her within two, maybe three weeks. Um, and she will only email you to let you know that she's received the application, she's reviewed, reviewed everything, and she'll let you know if there's anything else needed before she moves you to the next step, okay? So after you've submitted all that paperwork, the pre-screeners contacted you, she's going to move you to the next step. The next step is where you're scheduled for an intake session, and that's actually where I come in, okay? So like I said, I handle people who have already gone through pre-screening, and now they're trying to get on the wait list. So every month I hold a intake presentation for everybody who's gone through pre-screening and now they're getting more serious about the program and they're ready to go, okay? So you have to attend that intake session before you can actually be placed on the wait list. Um, part of the reason for that is we just wanna make sure that we are giving you the information needed to move forward. Uh, there's also paperwork that has to be signed at the intake presentation, so I go over all of that at the session. Once that session is over, if your case is ready to go, we will place you on the wait list, okay? So I kind of touched on the next point, but if you're in priority one, it's about a four to five year wait. Any priority after that, we do not have a time frame for. And then real quickly, I touched on this a little bit, but everybody who comes through the program and has a letter of eligibility will be required to complete the Virginia Housing Homeownership Education course prior to the six month mark of being in the program. This is a free course you can take online through Virginia Housing um, or you can take it in person, but we don't offer that course here with um, Loudoun County's Department of Housing, but that is a requirement you'll have to take once you're placed on the wait list. Okay, um, so we can go ahead and move to the next point or slide. Thank you. Oh. Okay, awesome. Okay, so everybody's letter of eligibility when they're placed on the wait list is good for a period of 16 months. Okay, so that just means that the, the expiration date that I give to you from the date it was approved will be good for 16 months. Um, if you want to stay on the wait list and continue your wait if you have not bought anything by that timeline, you would have to complete a renewal process. That's what we call it here with the ADU program. All of these items are actually touched on when you come to the intake presentation. Uh, but again, if you wanted to stay on the wait list for an additional 16 months, you'd have to provide the renewal documentation that's required to stay in the wait list. Um, like I said, we'll place this information on the letter when you're approved, but also we talk about it intake. We also have this information online so that if you had questions about renewing, you could just go directly to our website. Um, so that is the renewal process for the ADU program. When you purchase a home through the program, kind of stepping ahead of myself just a little bit, but when you purchase a home for the program, we do require once you're a purchaser to submit a yearly annual affidavit. Um, we'll talk all about this at the intake presentation too, um, but it's just an annual notarized affidavit that says that you're following the restrictions for the program now that you're a homeowner. Uh, it's done every year. We send it to you via certified mail, um, and then you have to submit it to us within, um, we give you a timeline, I think it's by June 1st, and we normally have it to you by May 1st of every year. A lot of times it's earlier than May 1st, um, but you have until June 1st as the homeowner to complete that affidavit and submit it back to us, okay? So again, that's not for when you're on the wait list, that's for when you're a homeowner through the program. Okay, we can move to the next slide. Okay, so I had mentioned this at the very beginning part of the presentation, but there are covenants attached to the ADUs that we have here in the program. Um, I had mentioned this a little bit earlier, but you need to make sure that your lender will finance an ADU. Um, and these are these top, the top part of this slide is is really why um, not all lenders finance ADUs. So. For the ADU program, the covenants are good for a period of 50 years, 5-0. Um, the first 15 years, pre-15 years is what we call it, means that when a home's been placed in the program, um, if you've purchased a home, let's say, let me back up because I want to make sure I'm not confusing you guys. So the covenants are good, like I said, for a period of 50 years. 
The 15 year mark is a really important period that I'm going to touch on. Um, these covenants are attached to the home, not to the buyer. That's important to make note of. Um, and the reason I wanted to step back and say that is because let's say you bought a home brand new in 2015. You own the home for 15 years, so in 2030, you've now owned that home 15 years and you bought it brand new. You can sell that home outside of the program to, to someone who is not in the program, but the county is going to split the difference between the ADU value and the value that you sell it for. And that's the post 15 years, okay? Um, the pre 15 years means that if the home has not been in the program for 15 years and you need to sell that home for whatever reason, you have to sell it back to the ADU program to another certified certificate holder for the county determined sales price. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an example before I finish up. Let's say that you bought a home that was that entered into the program in 2000. You bought the home in 2010, okay? But you didn't buy it brand new. You bought it after it had been in the program for for 10 years. That means that in 2015, you can sell that home outside of the program and split the difference between the county because that home will have hit the 15 year control period in 2015. OK, but if you bought that home and you needed to sell it in 2011, you bought it in 2010, then you would have to sell it back to the program like I was saying earlier. Um, and the county's only splitting the difference between the price that the ADU program is saying it's worth at the time they're going to sell it and the price you sell it for at market. So the county takes 50% of that difference and you keep the other 50%. Um, so that's how the covenants work. The 50 year control period just means that the homes are in the program for 50 years. So let's say you bought a home and you wanted to stay in that home for all 50 years. Let's say you buy it, you stay in it for 60 years. Okay, we don't even have homes at this point or at that point right now. But if you were to keep that home and um, up to the 15 year control period, once a home hits the 15 year control period, we do release them from the program. So they're no longer an ADU. Like I said, we haven't hit that point yet, but that's really just what that 50 year control period means on this slide. Um, so the home does have to be your primary residence. We don't allow you to run out the home and go live somewhere else. Um, that's part of the reason why you're completing the annual affidavit. Um, any eligible upgrades? Um, we do not have requirements on what you can and can't do to your, to your home. What we tell people is if it requires a permit, you need to contact building and development. Um, some of the homes, well, actually all of the homes will be attached, will have HOAs attached to them. You need to make sure that your HOA is okay with any um, upgrades or changes you're making to the home uh, because they do have restrictions. Uh, but we don't have any requirements other than telling you that if you make changes to that home, you want to make sure that you save copies of all receipts. And the reason we say that is because um, anytime you go to sell the home, whether it's before or after the 15 year control period, we take into consideration any changes that have been made to that home. OK, so if you're making changes, just make sure you follow the county permit guidelines and you're saving copies of receipts of the changes that you've made. All right, so that's kind of a little bit of a nutshell about the ADU program. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now to um, Sharon. Hello. <clears throat> Can we go to the next slide, please? Hi, I'm Sharon Hallman, and I'm the housing finance specialist for our down payment and closing cost assistance program and our uh, public employee grant program and in conjunction with Virginia Housing, the uh, SPARC program. Uh, the first uh, program I'm going to talk a little bit about is the Down Payment and Closing Cost Assistance Program, known as the DPCC. Uh, I will tell you uh, that there is a credit score limit. You have to have a minimum credit score of 620. Uh, the loan uh, amount of this DPCC can be up to 10% of the sales price or $25,000, whichever is less. It is a true second trust, 30 years at 5% interest, so your uh, monthly payments are, are pretty low. Um, the applicants must currently live and or work in Loudoun County for a minimum of six months. 
our household income must be between 30 and 70 percent AMI based on a four person household regardless of the household size. So if you're one person, you still look at the income bucket for between 30 and 70% AMI for a four person household. If you have 10 people in your household, you still look at the household income limits for 30 to 70% AMI. Uh, the current eligible income range is at the minimum $45,650 and at the maximum 106,500. Uh, it is a true second uh, trust and it is secured to your property as a second mortgage. There is no prepayment penalty, so you can pay it off with, uh, you know, no, no problems. Um, our uh, second program, next slide please. Uh, the next homeownership loan program is the Public Employee Homeownership Grant Program. It's available to full or part-time employees who work a minimum of 20 hours per week of the Loudoun County government, courts, and constitutional officers, and the Loudoun County public schools. This loan or grant is forgivable at 20% of the loan amount annually over a five-year period, provided the employee does not leave Loudoun County employment, sell the home, or no longer occupies the residence as their primary residence. The grant amount maximum is $10,000 for the purchase of a home located within Loudoun County, and this can be used towards down payment or closing costs. The household income must be between 30 to 70 percent AMI based on a four-person household regardless of the household size. So if you have one person, you're still going to fall in between the 30 to 70 percent AMI. If you've got 10 people, you're still going to uh, fall in the 30 to 70 percent AMI based on a four person household. The current eligible income range is forty five thousand six hundred and fifty dollars and the maximum is one oh six five hundred. Now with the um, public employee homeownership grant, it is zero percent interest and there are no monthly payments. It is, however, secured to your uh, property by second uh, trust mortgage. Next uh, slide, please. The final program I want to talk about is uh, the Sponsoring Partnerships and Revitalizing Communities SPARK program. This is a program that we uh, provide in conjunction with Virginia Housing. It is a low interest mortgage allocation from Virginia Housing for first time home buyers. Basically what that means is it is a, if you meet all the qualifications for this program, you basically get a 1% discount on your interest rate. Uh, you must meet VHDA uh, guidelines for uh, your first trust mortgage and your household income has a different set of limits. They're based on what uh, Virginia Housing has set up for uh, its programs. And that is uh, you can earn up to $162,000 for a household of two or fewer people. And if you're using Virginia Housing's down payment, uh, if it's conventional or FHA or closing cost assistance grant, if it's a VA, the uh, dollar amount that you can earn is 129,600 for a household of two or fewer people. Now, you can go up to 189,000 for a household of three or more people. Uh, again, if you're using Virginia Housing's down payment or closing cost assistance grant, that number drops to $151,200. You must currently live and or work in Loudoun County for a minimum of six months. Uh, you can purchase new or existing homes for $665,000 or less. That's Virginia housing's limit on the sales price located in Loudoun County. Uh, you do have to receive a mortgage loan from a Virginia housing approved lender participating in the VHDA mortgage loan program and we still have funding available. Uh, so this is um, a program that uh, is funded by Virginia Housing and we in essence act as the sponsor. Next uh, 
Next slide, please. These are some of the um, guidelines for uh, basically all our home ownership loan programs. Uh, you can use these programs to purchase either an affordable dwelling unit or a market rate home that you select with a realtor. Uh, you uh, reimbursement of prepaid costs and cash back at closing is not permitted under either program guideline. So if you pay uh, your appraisal fee in, on your credit card or in cash, you, we don't refund you that money. Uh, buyers eligible for the down payment and closing costs and PEG programs may only utilize one down payment assistance program. You can't get a DPCC and a PEG at the same time. However, you can get a DPCC or a PEG and use the SPARC program. Uh, the funding for uh, the DPCC and the PEG program and the SPARC program is limited and it is available on a first come first serve basis. The minimum credit score for all of our programs is 620. There are no waiting lists for the down payment closing costs, PEG and SPARC. Uh, please do not apply until after you have a fully ratified, signed by all parties sales contract and are working with a mortgage loan officer because the documentation that I will need in order to review and approve your down payment closing costs, PEG and PEG loan and or SPARC uh, loan really comes from your first trust lender. It's their credit package. Um, and now, uh, thank you very much for listening to uh, my programs. I'm going to turn this over to Christine Hillock. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sharon. Um, I am going to provide a very brief in, uh, a bit of information about our um, affordable market purchase program. Uh, so this is a program that enables first time home buyers with moderate income the opportunity to purchase a newly constructed townhouse or condominium. Those are currently the only two housing types in that program. Um, this program is open to households earning between 70 and 100% of the area median income. Uh, this varies based on household size, similarly to how the ADU um, income guidelines vary by household size. Um, currently for a, a household of four for the AMP program, um, that range would be $106,500 to $152,100, which is the which is 100% of the area median income uh, as of uh, May 15th. The waitlist for this program is open, but there is limited supply. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that you all knew that this was another option. Uh, details are available on our website at the link provided there, which is loudon.gov forward slash AMP, A-M-P-P. -P. Um, and the application is also online at that link. And you can go to the next uh, slide. So this is just a summary of all the programs that we discussed today. I'm not gonna go through these details because a lot of the details were already provided in previous slides. But we'll leave this here for just a minute just so you can kind of get a sense and take a look and see okay maybe which one of these might i want more information about and then the phone numbers are and websites for each of those programs are listed on this slide as well the 571-258-3814 number is sharon's um, phone number and then um, the uh, other number at the top there for the ADU program, 737-8043. That is the main phone number for our ADU program. Um, and that's the number you would call if you wanted to get additional information either about ADU rental or purchase. Um, and you can go to the next slide, Melinda. This slide um, provides just general contact information for our department. Um, so we do have a uh, physical location. Our programs are now located at 106 Catoctin Circle, Southeast in Leesburg. Um, and uh, the mailing address there is also listed. As Abby noted, uh, you wanna make sure that if you mail anything to our office, you wanna send it to the PO box. Mail that is sent to the street address, unfortunately is not delivered. So please feel free to stop in and see us at the street address or drop off paperwork at our front desk. Um, we do have um, a front desk that is open regular business hours from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, excluding holidays. We also have a drop box in our lobby a blue drop box that is um, open a little bit before and a little bit after business hours um, in case you need to drop anything off to us that's open um, available from 7 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. 
Um, our front desk phone number is listed there, and I've also included the general email address for our uh, office, which, I, I, as I mentioned before, is housing at loudon.gov. I'm primarily the person who answers those emails, so I'm happy to answer your questions or get you connected to um, the, the appropriate staff person or program. And then our web, main website is listed there as well, which is loudon.gov forward slash housing. And then you can go to the next slide, Melinda. Again, these are just the general um, email and, or sorry, uh, website address and phone numbers for the ADU program and uh, homeownership loan programs. And then we're going to leave this slide here um, for a few minutes because we want to make sure you can jot down anybody's direct contact information if you would like. So there's the information for Sharon, Abby, me, and Melinda. So go ahead and just leave that there for just a, a few seconds, Melinda. And then you can move on to the next slide. So we did receive a number of questions in advance of this session. So thank you to everyone who submitted your questions in advance. We do hope that we've answered many of those in today's presentation already. Um, we do have a few minutes, so I am going to go ahead and ask a, a couple, um, and I'm going to call on uh, Sharon and Abby to answer a, a couple of questions, if that's okay, before we close today. Um, and I, I am going to start with a question for Abby. Um, and the question is related to credit scores. Um, Sharon spoke a little bit about the credit score required for our homeownership loan programs. Um, and I wanted to uh, ask Abby, what's the credit score required for ADU purchase? Yeah, so we actually don't have a requirement. We got rid of that requirement a couple years ago. So there is no requirement. Yep. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear to folks so because we do get that yeah. question a lot. So okay. great. And then Abby, another question for you. Sure. Um, uh, and Sharon spoke a little bit about this, about combining programs or applying for more than one program. Can you talk a little bit about, um, can you combine multiple programs? Um, and this question is specifically, may I also apply for both the rental assistance program and the home purchase program through ADU? Yes, yeah, so you can apply to both programs at the same time. Um, well, a, for both ADU rental and purchase at the same time. They're two separate programs, so you're going to be submitting two separate applications, two packages. Um, one thing I always tell people, and I, I think Sharon did touch on this, for the ADU program, it takes a long time to come through the, the program, so don't apply to DPCC at the same time or PEG um, because it takes years to purchase through here. It can take her a short amount of time to get them approved for her programs. Great. Thank you. And then I'll uh, ask Sharon to answer the next question. Um, these are a couple of questions that are sort of related. Um, the first one is, how can you get a pre-approval letter without getting a runaround? Uh, do you mean a pre-approval letter from us uh, for our DPCC and PEG or SPARC programs? Yes. We don't do pre-approval letters. Okay, so then maybe this question is related more to Abby. Can you speak to that from the ADU perspective? Uh, yes. Okay, so if you're looking to get pre-approved, I'm not sure what they mean by runaround. Um, but if you're trying to get pre-approved the program, like I had mentioned, you want to make sure you get approved through a lender that finances ADUs uh, because of the restrictions, we don't finance them. So we have a lenders list on our website as a resource for people. There's about 25, maybe 27 on there, and all of them have said they finance ADUs. They're going to require a lot of the same documentation we, we require. Um, so if you if they meant run around like you don't have to provide the same items, that's not going to happen because both programs, us and the lender, they do have to have documentation. Great, thank you. Um, maybe Sharon, you could answer this. Um, what are the range of interest rates for loans offered in the homeownership loan programs? Uh, well, we only have uh, one program that has an interest rate, and that's the down payment and closing cost uh, program, and that interest rate is at 5%. Great. Thank you. Um, and then the last question I'll just throw out maybe to both of you. We got a couple of questions about people who want to move into Loudoun County from outside of the county, um, and the questions 
you know, one of these questions is what are the steps and qualifications if you just moved from another state or if you are moving from another state? So maybe if you could each answer that question from the perspective of, of the two programs, that would be great. Sharon, okay. you want to start? Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, my programs all require that you live or work in Loudoun County for a minimum of six months. So if when I get your application, I can see you lived in Maryland and you've just moved to um, Virginia to Loudoun County, I will be asking you prove that you have lived uh, or worked in the county for six months. That's our uh, minimum requirement. Great, thank you. And Abby, for ADU purchase? Sure. Okay, so we do not have a required time you have to live in Loudoun County and be working in Loudoun County. Um, what I do is when I go through the paperwork, if you're providing a Loudoun County address and I see that it's consistent through the application, um, I don't ask for any more proof than the paperwork you've sent to me. The one thing I do want to note is a lot of times I'll get applications and they might be providing a Loudoun County address, but their bank statements are showing Fairfax or their tax returns might be showing a different state, you know, whatever the case is. If I'm seeing inconsistency, I do require and ask for a copy of um, proof of the address, which is a copy of a lease or utility bill with the applicant's name and the Loudoun County address on it. Excellent. Well, I think that that is, um, I think we have covered a lot of the questions that we received in advance and hopefully those last couple of questions were helpful also. Um, we have again the email address that was up there, housing at loudon.gov. Don't hesitate to um, reach out and uh, send us additional questions after today. Um, and uh, so we just wanted to, on our last slide here, again, say happy Home Ownership Month to everyone. June is National Home Ownership Month. We do have a few more webinars planned for the rest of this month. On June 21st, we'll be joined by the Fi Loudoun County Fire Marshal's Office to provide an overview of fire safety, home fire safety, and home escape plans. Uh, on June 22nd, these are both next week, on June 22nd, we will be giving an overview of, home, uh, of uh, the Loudoun County Home Improvement and Repair Programs. And then on June 27th, um, we will be joined by representatives from the Virginia Mortgage Relief Program, which is a state-run program uh, that offers assistance um, for um, to prevent foreclosure, um, so uh, mortgage relief assistance. Uh, those webinars are still available, and you can continue to register for those on our main website, which is loudon.gov uh, forward slash housing. Um, and with that, I think we will go ahead and close the webinar for today and give you five minutes of time back. Uh, thank you again for joining us and um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon.